Matthew 13. Matthew 13, uh, we'll pick up in verse 24 to 30. How many uh, seasons do we have? Four. What are they? Summer, fall, winter, spring, or any combination. <clears throat> but really, there's, this is about four seasons of life here. Uh, about the, the wheat and the tares, tares in the wheat field. Now, let's stand and read verse 24 to 30. Another parable. So this is the story, and then we'll see the interpretation of the story in just a moment. <clears throat> so we have here another parable. It says in 1324 of Matthew, another parable put he forth, <clears throat> unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed what? Good seed in his field but while men slept his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat went his way. When the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him sir this not thou sow good seed in thy field, from whence then hath it tares? Which we'll discuss that in a minute, a tear. It's sort of like a look-alike plant. 28, he said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Meaning the tares. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So that is the parable, or the heavenly uh, story with an earthly meaning, or earthly story with a heavenly meaning, I should say. But now I'd look at verse 36, because they ask him, can you explain that? 36 of Matthew 13, J Jesus sent the multitude away and went to the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, what does he say? Declare, and make it clear, right? Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered, Jesus said uh, unto them, he that soweth a good seed, is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. So Father, we ask you to help us now to see uh, every person on earth has to deal with this this plan of four seasons. <clears throat> we thank you for this story. May somebody that may watch our video be saved, truly saved, and not be a tear in the wheat, wheat field, but be wheat and grain in the wheat field, be saved people. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Thank you, be seated. <clears throat> the four seasons of life. Now this story is a thumbnail snapshot of the four seasons of life here. The 36 to 43 is a larger portrait of those same four seasons of life, or it's the big picture, or the real picture, and not the parable or the, uh, the illustration he was trying to teach. <clears throat> now this uh, story here, it is how God works with mankind as Satan hinders God. Uh, this is the way God works with everybody on earth. <clears throat> it's how God works with mankind and Satan hinders God. How many know that Satan always hinders God? He tries to, he always loses, you know. He's like the wily coyote and the road runner. You know, who who wins every time? Beep beep. Yeah. Beep beep. I, I guess that's his name, I don't know. But uh so we have this these two stories 
are in short sentence form. They're not in long paragraphs. They're period, period, period. It's easy to get. It's easy to understand if you read it slow. It's self-explanatory. So it is a short story in short sentence form, easy to get the meaning. It's very clear. Now we have these four seasons, and these are seasons of crops. And now we were talking about some of our crops we've planted this year. How many have planted something, whether it's flowers or, but this deals with fruit, things you can eat and use. Flowers, you get to smell them, right? And look at them and doll up stuff for a while. But uh, fruits and vegetables, you get to eat them and it keeps you alive. Uh, you can eat some flowers. Actually, that's what the okra is, is a flower. And uh, so I've got, mine's coming up and uh, it's, it's, it's hard to get it started as dry as it's been. But, but they're moving on now. And Brother Cyrus says he, he's got bigger plants than I do, so he was bragging this morning. <clears throat> Did you order some of that long okra, the specialty stuff he had? No. Oh, just regular? Okay, that stuff was like 10 inches long. <laughs> and I, I got some of that last year from you. So we have four seasons. We have the sowing season, and then we'll see the growing season, and then we'll see the knowing season, and then, of course, we'll see the mowing season, these four seasons in this story here. Now, over in 24 and 25, first of all, we see in verse 24 and 25, the sowing season. It says, Another parable he put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like, or likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed. So a good man sows, a bad man sows, sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now 36 and 37 identifies that. And so 36, Jesus said an explanation. Then <clears throat> the disciples said, declare unto us the parable. And he says in verse 37, he answered and said unto them, he that, what, <clears throat> soweth the good seed is the son of man. And so 36 and 37 identify with 24 and 25. Now, in researching the tares, one, uh, one writer, I should say, identified it. A kind of darnel, which is meaning a grass, type of a grass, <laughs> How many know that uh, some grass can get 10 feet tall? Uh, switch grass and you know, jungle grass. <clears throat> and some, some, all grass looks different. There's so many varieties, thousands of them. So it says, <clears throat> a kind of darnel grass resembling weed except the grains are black. <clears throat> it says the grains are black so they can identify them as, they, as they're growing. Now that sort of reminds us of the darkness of man's heart, you know, because we're called light when we get saved. And it says men love what? Darkness more than they did light because their deeds were evil. <clears throat> so I thought it was interesting that the grains <clears throat> have a black color to them in the tares, but not in the wheat or the, or the grain. Now in Unger's Bible Dictionary years ago, clip this short article out here and uh, Dr. Unger says the Darnell, it's called the bearded uh, the bearded Darnell says tares are very numerous in the grain fields along with a large number of other species of plants not suitable for human food. They're left until the stalks are well grown together and then not long before the harvest Women and children and sometimes the men go carefully among the grain and pull up all but the wheat and the barley. Nowadays, these weeds are not burned, but they are fed to cattle. If any tares remain unnoticed until the grain is harvested and threshed out, the seeds are separated from the wheat and barley and set aside for poultry to eat nowadays. There are four kinds of tares in the Holy Land Far, far the most common of which is in the grain fields is 
the bearded Darnell. It is a poisonous grass, almost indistinguishable from wheat, while the two, while the two are growing into the blade. But when they come to, into the full ear of fruit, they can be separated without any difficulty. And so we see here the sowing season. God is son of man who sowed this good seed, and who sowed the evil seed? The evil man, which represents the devil that Jesus will tell us about. So we have the sowing season. Now back to verse 26, uh, we see here. Secondly, the growing season. So the seed is in the ground. How many have ever planted any pack of seeds and some didn't come up? Yeah. And some, some are malformed if you look at them closely. They, they're, just, they're just not right. They're lopsided or whatever. And you do have some that never come up or some that, that do all kinds of curly cues, <laughs> grow strangely. But now we have the seed is growing, a second season here. Verse 26, it says, But when the blade was sprung up, see the growing, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. And so we pick up with verse 38, identifies that. And he says here about the growing season here, the sowing we've seen. Uh, he says, 38, The field is the world. <clears throat> the good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Now, we are in a terrible age of confusion in Christianity worldwide. We have millions and millions and millions of people that claim to be Christian and followers of Christ that live nothing like Christ lives. They, they're just naive, religious people. <clears throat> I was just thinking, as you get saved, and as you get older, we should be more Christ-like than the day we got saved. Yeah. Now, the sower and the seed, the four soils, you know, Jesus taught that before this. And uh, how many Christians do you know that reached a seemingly Christian peak in their life, and now they're devolving and they're as bad as they were when they got saved or worse they still claim to be saved people you know people like that i know people like that i know ex-members of our church that have absolutely ruined their life and others lives and they were supposedly christian teachers leaders soul winners they're dime a dozen so the growing season, we should be able to see Christians growing even a little bit because in that other parable, it says some it brought forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100. Every Christian that's born again brings forth, they grow, you understand. They should be growing. They should not be shrinking and fa falling into the worldliness again. So... We know that Paul teaches in Romans chapter 8, most of the chapter is sowing to the uh, flesh or sowing to the spirit, right? So we have this contest going on and uh, either living fleshly, carnal, and sensual or living spiritually or spiritual and godly lives. So we should be growing. If the seed has been sown in our hearts, the new birth, there's no reason why we should not be growing, right. except that they don't read their Bibles, they don't go to church. My neighbors out there this morning, you know, all around me, a um, young couple across the street with their four kids, teeny tiny kids, they, they go to a Presbyterian type church. But everybody else on the block that I know is not going to church today. None of them, but me and my friends across the street, young couple over there, and everybody else is just doing their thing. Got their boat out there, they got lawnmowers going, just, and they claim to be Christians. Several of them claim to be Christians, but they don't darken the door of a local Testament, New Testament church or, or Bible, but they all agree with the Bible, but they don't, they don't obey the Bible. 
So the growing, so we'll see here thirdly now the knowing season, which leads us into this. And so we have the sowing season in 24 and 25 and the growing season in 26 and 38. <clears throat> now, the knowing season, this is when you can start seeing the fruit uh, come up and the, 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 the stalk, the ear, the blade it's called. And then I, I can just see the budding of some of my plants. Actually, if, uh, we were hoping to get the first really good tomatoes we planted. But some varmint got to them first. And uh, we don't know if it's a squirrel or if it's a groundhog or if it's a possum. You know, they like good food too. And so as a wolf, so they got the first one, but I think we got the third one. And it was so sweet. I don't even know about several varieties this year, but we're going to have a good crop. How many like tomatoes? Yeah. They cost you about $3 a pound at the store. But we'll sell them to you for a dollar and a quarter. <laughs> How does free sound cheap enough? All you cheap Baptists out there, it won't be long. We'll have, we'll know, we've got fruit. And it's, it's coming. So you see it growing there. So it's a knowing season. Twenty-seven to thirty uh, speaks like this. Uh, verse twenty-six. We covered that. When the blades were sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So now 27, we see the knowing season, how you can tell the difference between the false and the real fruit. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, <clears throat> didst not thou sow good seed in thy field, from whence then <clears throat> hath it tares or counterfeits? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. <clears throat> the servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? And it goes to verse 30 here. But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares. And he's saying, You gotta know what you're doing, fellas. This is knowing. You gotta know what you're dealing with. <clears throat> gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, and then he goes on. So 30 verse A there. We stop there. So we see the fruit time. It's, it's coming on. You can see it. It's not, it's not ready to, to pull it out yet or to, or to clip it off. But he said, you, you've got to know what you, you got to know what you're looking at. You have to know the difference between weeds. Has anybody ever kind of hoed your garden and the plants were, were up small and you hit a plant that was a was a real plan, you cut it in half. How many's ever done that? All of us probably have done that. I didn't see that. It was just so small and the weeds were growing around it and you tried it with a little hoe or something. How many have planted and you knew there's a spot, uh, indentation in the soil and there's weeds everywhere except that plant's missing. You had a blackbird come through there and pinch it off just out of curiosity, how many, they thought it was a green worm probably. And they, they, how many know blackbirds just do that? They just come through there and they, they don't care. So anyway, we have to know what we're dealing with. Now, <clears throat> speaking of fruit, look at Matthew three real quick. Matthew chapter three and verse number 15, I believe it is. Uh, no, 3, 8, verse, excuse me, 3, verse 8. So John the Baptist is telling the unsaved hypocrites, leaders, Jewish leaders, they want to be baptized, and he says, nah, -uh, nah, I know, I know what I'm dealing with. You're, you don't know the Lord. He tells these hypocrites in, in John, uh, Matthew 3, verse 8, bring forth therefore what? Fruits, meat, or fitting, all right, fitting for repentance. So he could tell they, they had no spiritual insight. They were not born. They were not saved people. They didn't believe in Jesus was the Messiah. Now in verse 10 says, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth forth what? Not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. John the Baptist. Now 7.15 tells us this. And Jesus uh, gives us this uh, 7 15 to 20 
we see here, Jesus says about fruit. Now, we're not judging people when we say they're probably not saved, or maybe they are saved. We're not judging people. We're judging what people do. Fruits. Beware of the false prophets, 7.15 of Matthew. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, counterfeits, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their plural fruits. Not one thing, but things they do. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Can you get figs out of a sticker, sticker bush? No. Can you get grapes in a thorn bush? No. 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Well, that's pretty simple, isn't it? Just watch what people do. Don't watch what they say. See if they can bring forth fruits unto Christ. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Can't do it. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Now, sometimes people don't go to church because they're afraid they'll get their toes stepped on, right? Plus, they'll hear about tithing and sending missionaries. Well, that just tells you it's probably a lost person. Yeah. I mean, most of us go to hear good, strong Bible preaching. Yeah. So we can get our shoes shined, right? So we can feel the pressure of, of, of the pressure on our, our sinful ways and grow in the Lord. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. <laughs> neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree, every, every, how many? Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their what? Fruits ye shall know them. Wow. So it's not really judging people. It's judging what people do based on what they say. Compare their works to their words. And if the works and words don't line up, well, guess what? You can pretty much put a tag on that person and either try to get them saved or avoid them so they don't drag you down by their counterfeit, uh, counterfeits, uh, you might mask they put on. So we see here the grow sowing season, the good seed and the evil seed. We see the growing season uh, as it starts to, come to pass and grow and turn green and tall and, and lush the knowing when and what we're dealing with in the garden <clears throat> but there's a last one here it's called the mowing season it's time for the harvest now so it's been sown we've let it grow we now see it mature now it's time to take it out of the garden and to enjoy it so we have here now, as far as the fruit goes, think about this. Carnal religious people, they, they work in the name of God. Catholics, Episcopalians, many other groups. They're, how many know that all the Episcopalian churches today seem to be open to, to talk about God? Jehovah's Witnesses, they're open to talk about God. Uh, the Catholics are open to talk about God. But see, they're doing their works uh, in the name of God. Where the Christian works, not religious works, but Christian works are done not in the name of God, but we work by the power of God. We're motivated by God they're motivated by works in the name of God. Islam's the same way. I mean, they can they could kill everybody in this room and it would be praise Allah. How how demonic is that? But they do it they do it for works so they can go to heaven. But we don't. We work because God lives in us, and we do what we do because Jesus lives within us by the Spirit of Christ. So the mowing season, look at verse 30. Go back uh, to chapter 13. <clears throat> so we left off at 30a. Let both grow together until the harvest. So we're now the mowing season, 30 and 
the B part, second part. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares, first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. Gather the wheat into my barn. Now, going to 39 to 43, he explains that. <clears throat> 39 to 43. So he's explaining the harvest. Then he says, the enemy that sowed them uh, is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Son of man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. Shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous, the good seed, shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him get good hearing aids. Amen. Amen. Get good batteries for your hearing aids. Hear this. Now hear this. Who shall, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So Matthew 7, 21, <clears throat> we see here it's the mowing season or the harvest time. <clears throat> and Jesus talks about the mowing and the sowing and the growing, <clears throat> but here in knowing, look at chapter 7, 21 up to verse 24. Jesus says, Not everyone that saith unto me, and we know this, we've studied this many times, <clears throat> but maybe somebody will hear this on a recording and get saved. <clears throat> Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. <clears throat> what is the will of God? It's to get saved. That's the, first, that's the first thing God wants you to do is give up your sins and get Christ as your Savior. I mean, if you don't, go that, if you don't do that, nothing else matters. You're going to hell. He that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, <clears throat> many will say to me in that day, God, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Haven't we told the future? Haven't we, haven't we forced, predicted what's coming? And, and in the name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. When you ask people, do you know the Lord? Oh, yeah, amen, praise the Lord, hey, hallelujah. Yeah, I remember I got been saved four times. Been baptized three of those. But guess what? That just tells you the Lord does know them. People say, you ask most anybody that claims to be a Christian, are you for sure you're going to heaven? Well, I, I, sure, I'm, I hope so. Sure, I hope so. They don't go together, do they? It's either sure or I don't know. And uh, so he's saying here, you can do everything in the name of God. It will do you no good at all when, when it comes down to your sins and judgment. Then I will say, I profess unto you, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. How many Bible colleges and universities, Christian universities and professors know much more of the archaeology and the history of the Bible have been on tours to Jerusalem and, and claim to be Christian leaders and, and are going to hell knowing all that. You're talking about turning the heat up in hell because they never taught the new birth. I had a young man, he managed a Hardy's down here 30 years ago and uh, <clears throat> Andrew was his name and he started taking religious courses at, at the university, SMS, back then. And uh, he said, you know, I, uh, I didn't realize how wicked that is to take a course in religion at a state university. He said the first thing they do is get you to believe that any one religion is, is not, it's all religions are, they all 
they all believe the same fables, or they all believe the same truths, but you can't you can't uh, isolate religions one above the other. They're all they're all well meaning. They're all if there's a heaven, they're all going to the same place anyway. Well, that's universalism. You know the Unitarian Universalist Church. When I'm taught on cults, that's that's the cult that's most responsible for religious courses in state universities is the Universalist Church. We're all going to the same place if there's a God at all. So we see here that he's talking about them going to going to hell. Let's finish up in Revelation 20 and see the big picture here. Revelation chapter 20, the great white throne judgment. <clears throat> so we have the sowing season. How many know about that? Amen. Aren't you glad that God sowed the word in our heart, Amen. brought conviction to our sinful souls, Amen. and then we got saved, we knew God, and we knew God knew us. And uh, the two-way street must be. God has to grant us salvation. We just can't earn it no matter what. You can pray a certain prayer and think you got saved. Prayer don't save you. God saves you. And he saves you the way the Bible says he saved you. That you put your total faith in Christ through his grace. When you get saved, you have to understand, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve anything. If I go to hell, I, one, one guy tried to win the Lord several times in the neighborhood. Well, if I go to hell, I guess I deserve it. I said, yeah, but you don't have to go. Yeah, but I like the way I live. See? And so, you know, he said, if, if I steal something and somebody's not using it, he said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not stealing because they're not using it and I need it. That's, that's a thief you know, at heart, thinks that way. Great White Throne Judgment, <clears throat> after the millennial reign, after the doom of Satan, we pick up in verse 11, Revelation 20, verse 11. And I saw a great white throne <clears throat> him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them nowhere to hide I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works meaning their evil works their unsaved works and the sea gave up the dead, 20 verse 13 of Revelation, the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Now those five guys that died in that submersible going to see the Titanic, now I can only imagine what was not left. How many tons of pressure per square inch? Six tons, I think they said, of pressure. And that would flatten any tin can, steel can, to, to just flat, a flat piece of steel. It would compress everything. And they brought parts of that submersible up and they had sheets over it. How many saw that? And they brought that wreckage because it was so gruesome, everything didn't blow out, it all came squished in. And all their bodies were squished in that one little compartment. And you can only imagine what uh, that might have been like. Well, it says here, the sea will give up the dead which are in them. So that which is destroyed and eaten by the... God, I mean, if God made everything, he could make it again, amen? Right. It says here, the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. They were judged, every man according to their works, meaning their evil works. The lost works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which is the story we just studied. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life, what was cast into the lake of fire. Is the lake of fire open yet? No. Hades is. We say go to, is the word hell? when actually they can only go to Hades right now. The lake of fire has not been opened until this scene here. The holding pen of misery and torment 
<clears throat> Some have been there thousands of years. But the lake of fire, and what's even worse than that, the devil will be there. Yeah. And the false prophet and the beast. We won't be there. Amen. Look at 21, verse 8. <clears throat> but the fear for here's going to here's who's going to hell. Who's first? Verse 8. 21 8. I, I would get saved, but I'm afraid what they might think. I'm afraid what the family might I'm afraid what my girlfriend might say. Who's the but the fearful? They're the first, the cowards, the fearful. <clears throat> and then what else? The unbelieving, I just don't believe it. And then the abominable means desperately wicked. The abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers. And that, that deals with uh, pharmakios, the word sorcerer, which is where we get our drugs from. Uh, pharmakios, ph pharmacy. Sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. <laughs> so we have here the picture that Jesus was painting in the book of Matthew. Now, 1 John uh, 21, 6, let's don't miss that, 21, verse 6 and 7. Because anybody who thinks you can work your way to heaven or keep yourself worked up or work keep your works up uh, i'm going to show you something now verse six it says and he said unto me speaking of christ it is done i'm alpha and omega the beginning and the end i will give give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life out freely there's not a thing i mean you pray the right prayer it's still the wrong prayer to get saved you receive salvation. You don't earn it. Now you come in earnest with an open heart to be saved, but you have to understand you don't deserve to be saved. He that, what's the next word? He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So now we have these Christian almost cults teaching that only certain people are going to be raptured. Only certain people are going to be in heaven. The Jehovah's Witnesses, they teach this, that only the 144,000 will actually go to heaven. The rest of them uh, that uh, did what the JW say, they will live on earth. That's why they always teach about the perfect earth coming. And, uh, but the 144,000 uh, are special people. They, they did everything that J, the JW's watchtower Talk. They they're the elite. That, talk about pride. How would you like to walk around and say, "Well, I know I'm going to be in heaven because I'm one of the hundred forty-four thousand." They, they have a checklist. I had a barber down here. He was a leader in, in the JWs, and uh, he's been gone for many years. But the first time I went to get a haircut, he had his JW material on his back, and the first thing he started talking about was. Uh, the kingdom coming on the earth and uh, he tried to I said well you know I'm pastor of the Baptist church up the road here I don't think I'm interested <laughs> and he had a little train that ran around the whole perimeter of the, the walls Did anybody ever go to that barbershop and people would go there so the whistle stop barbershop he was a train enthusiast it's really a neat place and so people would bring their kids there he has been there forever but he was a leader, and he was one of the 144,000 types that think I, I've arrived. He was a leader. I've seen him in the neighborhoods with people going door to door uh, many years ago, 35 years ago. So we have here 21, 6, and 7 talks about he that overcometh shall inherit all things. So they teach that you have to keep overcoming, and you have to keep working, and you have to keep your salvation, and you have to earn it earn it earn it but that now let's finish up go to first john since we started the book of first john on wednesday nights this past week and uh the same guy wrote revelation wrote first john as we we know that but here's what john taught about salvation and overcoming look at first john <clears throat> to prove that you do not keep working to keep your salvation now 
5 and verse number 4 and 5. 1 John 5. For whatsoever is born of God, what's the next word? Overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Here we go. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that what? Believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So when you're saved, you're going to heaven. You don't try to keep it. You don't try to improve on it. You just, either you have it or you don't have it. You're either wheat or you are a tear in the wheat field. You are either saved and you're worth having, or you're a piece of junk that needs to go to the fire heap. That's what we see. You're either born again or you're not born again. If you had anything to do with getting saved, or if you have anything to do with staying saved, you are a tear in the wheat field, and you will burn in hell unless you get saved the way the Bible says you've got to get saved. So it says, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? So that is what an overcomer is, somebody that has been born again, that knows Christ, and it's, uh, it's going to heaven. How many here think you're going to heaven? Now, see, Shirley messed that up. She said, I know. That's what we all ought to be able to say. I know. Because God came in and changed my life. And I am not a tear in the wheat field. I am the grain. I'm the barley. I'm the wheat. Because God made me. God sowed me as a seed. So we've seen the sowing season of life. The growing season of life, the mowing season of life, this is the harvest at the end of time. <clears throat> and so, Lord, we thank you for the time we've studied this morning. Amen. We would ask you now to help us to not judge people, but judge the works that they speak, that, to make sure our friends and family are saved and not uh, tears in the wheat field, just playing games, waiting to see if they can sneak into heaven some, somehow later on. And uh, may we see folks be saved and born again, just like you dealt with our, our sinful lives. And thank you for eternal salvation. Thank you that we are overcomers because we have believed what Christ has said and we have uh, given our lives to Christ. So we pray now that you would uh, bless our invitation song and bless the, this brand new week. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Let's stand and turn to page number 177. 177. How many is going to heaven? Amen. Can I meet you there? Yes, sir. Well, that's what this invitation song says. I'll meet you there. I'm thinking of all the members that have come and gone in our church through the years and those that we sadly lost during COVID. But guess what? There, there's not enough money in all of the creation to, to pay them to come back. They have no heartaches, no headaches. <clears throat> On the happy golden shore Where the faithful part no more When the storms of life are o'er Meet me there Where the night dissolves away Into pure and perfect day I am going home to stay Meet me there Meet me there Meet me there Where the tree of life is blooming Meet me there when the storms of life fall o'er on the happy golden shore where the faithful part no more. Meet me there. Verse 2 177. Here her fondest hopes are vain, dearest things are rent in twain, but in heaven no throb of pain. Meet me there by the river sparkling bright. In the city of delight, where faith is lost in sight, meet me there, sing out. Meet me there, meet me there, where the tree of life is blooming, meet me there. When the storms of life are roar on the happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, meet me there. Verse 3, where the harps of angels ring and the blessed forever sing, 
in the palace of the king meet me there where in sweet communion blend heart with heart and friend with friend in a world that never shall end meet me there sing it out meet me there meet me there will me meet me there Happy golden shore. Let's do verse one again. That's a good one. On the happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, when the storms of life fall, meet me there. Where the night dissolves away into pure and perfect day, I am going there to stay. Thank you. 